found Aho Radio, where authentic human outliers come in together to help heal the fear of being authentic, to bring back genuine human conversation. No hype, no sensationalism, just honest talk about the critical issues affecting society, affecting humankind. And now, here are the hosts of Aho Radio, John Korotek and Bill Perotsman. Hey, Bill Protzman here with another episode of the Aho Radio Poetry Corner and John Krotek, my fearless co-host, coming to you from where? You're, you're West Coasty as well, man. I am yeah. West Coast of Florida, about a um, about an hour south of Tampa and some of the world's most beautiful beaches right around the corner. Dude, but, you know, uh, I discovered something. My I have ancestors that live in that used to live in St. Mary's, Georgia, which is just literally on the other side of the river from Florida over on the East Coast. Yeah, that's up near Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right across near, the river, near, uh, near the yeah. sub base. And um, I, I had no idea. You know, you do your genealogy and you find out this stuff. So I've got, you know, relatives that were on the south and relatives that were on the north. And uh, I'm quite sure both sides did disrespectful things at some point <laughs> during the Civil War. <laughs> well, you know, disrespect is a good word, you know, and, and respect. You know, before we get started, you know, I really wanted to uh, and welcome, uh, welcome uh, listeners to an episode of The Poetry Corner. Uh, these are some definitely some interesting times. Before we share today's poem, I'd like to read a quote. Oh, yeah, uh, do. This is great, you guys. This is um, this is a quote by Thomas Paine. And if you don't know who Thomas Paine is, he's, a, he's an American patriot. And uh, he wrote the book Common Sense, and it's worth reading. But in relation to what's going on right now with COVID-19 and the Black Lives Matter all these protests and violent anarchy going on. I think this is pretty appropriate, especially with today's poem. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands by it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. And, you know, I think that's so appropriate because the poem that I'm going to read today is in memory of Captain David Dorn, uh, who's 77 year old black man who uh, had served many, many years in the St. Louis Police Department and who was tragically shot and killed a few nights ago in the senseless anarchy that's taking place in many of our cities across America. And I think, you know, you and I have talked about it. There's a distinct difference between protest and a violent protest, sometimes a friendly a friendly protest turns into violence, pushing and shoving, and people get hurt and get arrested. But there's also a different type of protest that is called anarchy. And anarchy is something that, 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 that there's no justification ever for anarchy. It stains humanity. There's no rule of law. There's no respect. And anarchists, once you once they achieve their means, if you go against an anarchist, then you're you're an enemy. So I just want to make that distinction, Bill, that in the United States of America, you can protest peacefully. And unfortunately, they do turn in to sometimes um, violent situations. But anarchy is a complete different thing. And, and I know that, you know, if you were doing things like that in Stalinist Russia, <laughs> you'd, you'd be, you you'd be on have way a name. The, you'd be on the way to the gulag right now. So, yeah, you know, yeah. you better thank God that you're in the United States of America and that, uh, that we do exercise a rule of law because that's not going to stand. Let me split hairs, though, for a second on anarchy, because I agree with your point, but I want to play devil's advocate just for a sec. So where's the line? I mean, anarchy is some we can't go anywhere in anarchy without any rules. We're not going to be able to achieve what we want. And America has a set of rules that help us get what we want. However, they aren't working right now for whatever reason. So where's the dividing line? When does it, when does it stop being like a, a righteous anger or even a righteous violence, like in, in war, defending us, our homeland? When does the line get crossed from there to anarchy, John? I mean, in your mind. Well, I think that anytime you, it's uh, a great question. Anytime you inflict more violence and pain on private citizens, who maybe don't have or usually don't have skin in the game other than the fact they're a citizen of a country. 
but you know, whenever you inflict damage on a private, on private property uh, or on, on person, or you destroy public property that technically belongs to all of us, you know, when you're destroying things like uh, cop cars you know, and uh, cop cars and it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous that right now to, to, to think that there are actually people out there, primarily these anarchists, that believe that we live in a police state. Ladies and gentlemen, I've traveled around the globe and, and I was in Bolivia once and I stayed at a hotel in downtown La Paz and there was a protest that was taking place right outside the window. And I said, this is kind of interesting because these police officers showed up in, in what you see these anarchists wearing, all black and faces covered. And, you know, they had the shields up, billy clubs and firearms. And what I witnessed is a police state. I saw um, arms being broken. I saw people being shot. I saw faces smashed. And literally this, you don't read about this in the papers. There's no, no this is way beyond anything we'd imagine there's, in the United States. Yeah, there's no mass media down there. It was over in about 10 minutes. And it was so brutal. It left me, it still is vivid in my mind today, you know, 15 years later. And so when I think about that, that's anarchy or that's a police state. These were peaceful protesters. They were screaming and yelling. I don't even know what the protest was about. There was nothing written about it anywhere I ever found. And it was over very quickly. So, you know, to think that we live in a police state in the United States of America, and I'm not going to say we're perfect by any sense of the imagination, and that law enforcement needs to look at their practices. Um, but for the most part, I, that's a ridiculous notion. And, if, and, and even yeah, that's if not was, really the question right now, is it? But and even if it was true, let's say we live in a police state in, in America. OK, even if it was that bizarre, how is anarchy going to help change it? You're only going to solidify in the perception of the people you claim to be helping or the people who might be interested in supporting you. You're only going to solidify a negative perception and, and it's going to lead nowhere. And, and I, I'm a firm believer in karma. Lord knows how many mistakes I've made in my life and paid for them. It's only going to come back to bite you. And, 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 and there are people out there that believe, well, I understand, you know, why they're protesting. And yeah, that's kind of not right. But, but I don't buy that. I don't buy that defense. You either have a core value that's nonviolent and not a non-anarchist or you, or you don't. There's no yeah. fine line there. Protest yeah. all you want. And if a protest peaceful turns turns violent, which usually means pushing and shoving and maybe some some hurt skin and black and blue, which you hope doesn't happen. But when you start throwing Molotov cocktails and destroying property and people's livelihoods, it's a whole different ball game, and the cards yeah. are off the table. Yeah, we had a situation here in San Diego uh, this week where the. I'll try to sort of describe it in a way that keeps things separate. But we had a Black Lives Matter righteous protest that met up with a sort of an anarchist. Um, I don't know who they were, but definitely different topic like Antifa, white supremacist protest. It was happening at the same time. And the way the cops controlled the situation was they forced the two groups together, which, of course, was incendiary for the people who were in the groups but it allowed the cops to contain the situation. And that's one of those kinds of choices that cops all over the place have got to make these days. So how do I deal with this effectively? How do, I, how do I do what's best for the most people right now in this place? And um, you know, some people got hurt. But, but the idea is if you're, gonna, if, you're, if, you're to, if you're gonna foment violence that way, you need to be prepared for the response. In America, that's a measured response. In Bolivia, it's not. In the Soviet Gulag, it's not. <laughs> but it could be if the army comes out, man, they aren't they don't fire rubber bullets, you know, and we hope that that doesn't happen, you know, but, you know, what, 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 what worries me is the word of race and racism. We know that the the very foundation of our country had had that is a huge part of, a, of our social fabric. Right. Yeah. But we get to a point to where we use these words and they become desensitized. And then if we get into a discussion of race. Well, you don't agree with me on a race issue. You're you're a racist. 
And I, and I see the, the, yeah, it, the, you know what, it was like that for, um, um, what do they call anti-Semitism too. And there was a time in America where if you in Congress stood up for a viewpoint that was different than the, uh, the, the loudest Jewish viewpoint, you'd be labeled an anti-Semite, anti-Semite, you'd be thrown out of Congress. And, and that's not intellectually honest either. So we have no, to get no. beyond this labeling thing. And, as... and that's what we, and that's what we talk about, Bill, you're, you're entirely correct. You know, we talk about healing without labels. Yes. The only way we're going to heal as a nation is to quit labeling each other as this yeah. or that, you know, we're looking for leadership here, police officers, police departments, organizations, identify the rules of engagement, clean up, your hiring practices and your training practices, and then find the leadership. And it's tough. It's not easy, but find the leadership that has the moral compass and the courage and bravery and doesn't fall into good old boy syndrome or peer yeah. pressure yeah. to do what's right for protecting and policing our communities, serving our communities. You know, you, know, you it, reminded me, there's a website where you can go and look up your city in the United States and find out where it stands on like the eight measurements of how to change a police department. And some people have done the research and they've actually pulled together the data and I'll post that in the show notes. So you can look at your own city, like San Diego, we have a scorecard and we're knowing how, how well we're doing against those eight things that are, um, that are good ways of being able to restructure your PD to do what it needs to do, right? And, and more importantly, they're, they're focused on what Black Lives Matter deserves. So yes, uh, and, and, check and it great, out. I'll put it in the show notes. Great point. And, you know, and, and you know, and, and honestly, uh, to the police uh, law enforcement leaders out there, you know, and you all know this, I don't need to, you know, that the community needs you. The, yeah. and, the, and, 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 and ladies and gentlemen, you need the police. You know, we joke about it, the Ghostbusters, right? Who are you going to call? If you got problems, who are you going to call? And, and, and it has to be a collaborative effort. There's got to be mutual respect yep. and not just lip service. You know, what that guy did to George Floyd was horrific. Have we met a person yet? White, black, yellow, red, brown, any color on the green Martians would look at that and say, that's totally against the universal laws of how humans should be treating each other. That's right. Right? That's right. But it doesn't warrant the level of anarchy we're seeing. It warrants protests. Absolutely. We're all protesting in one way or another. But it doesn't warrant the complete breakdown of society and civility that at the very basic foundation of community requires. I mean, America was founded because the founding fathers uh, white guys who put their lives on the line and basically declared themselves publicly as traitors to the king, by the way. So talk about people putting your lives on the line. So those guys gave us a framework that will work today if we let it work. And we have to not only let it work, but we have to encourage it when it doesn't. And that's where we are. We, we don't want to go all the way from we got to encourage this thing to work better to anarchy where there are no rules, because it's the very rules that allow us to do what we do. Yeah, oh, man. And, you know, it's oh. music to my ears, you know, you know, and people, well, we were raised, you know, the United States was formed on, on, on rebellion. There's a difference between rebellion and anarchy. There's a right. difference. And even an army is organized. You know, we yes. didn't win. We, did, we didn't, we weren't able to resist the, uh, you know, the British empire. Dude, this was like worldwide at the time. We were not able to resist that through anarchy. We resisted we that through organization and for purpose and focus and a, and a 10 year view of what it would be like if we were able to win. And we got when the, people behind us to support us what we wanted. You know, we really did that, did it the hard way, you know? Well, but, 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 you know, when the smoke clears on anarchy, what do you have? You have a bunch of yeah. thugs. Smoke. That have, <laughs> well, that, yeah, well, they have, a, you have no, no commerce. You have no livelihoods. You've burned destroyed, things, broken people. Destroyed I mean. the places that you have to live. And then you've got a group of thugs that are off to the next caper. Yep. What's your plan? One world order where there's no, where, you know, and then if you go against these thugs, then, then you become labeled as, then you get labeled as another enemy. So this is, so, this is, yeah. this is like the, the middle ground where both you and I are sitting right now. So we're obviously we're white guys, but here we are in this place where we're in between anarchy and doing nothing. Right. 
And white people are challenged right now in this place. It's a tough place to be. It's kind of scary. So what do you do? Do you start to deny things? Do you say, uh, not in my backyard? I mean, you have to take a stand. You're, you were challenged right now to take a stand. And, and the stand that you and I are taking right now, John, is the step that says when you step over the line to anarchy is when you lose support from me. Absolutely. And, and it Got dilutes it? the message. And, and you know what? Anarchy, you have to know what your moral compass is. You have to know yep. what your core values are. And, and you also have to realize that every action that you take in your life, you have to be accountable for it. You can't That's say... Right. You can't say that this cop made me do it. Yep. Oh, he's did a bad thing to this black person laying on the ground. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to firebomb uh, a building. Yeah. You have to be responsible for your illegal actions. And that's the problem is everybody wants to blame somebody else for the pain that they're in. Haven't we all experienced pain? Dude, we're united by our pain. Aren't we one step away from being in jail ourselves because of the pain we feel and this indignation that we feel for this, you know, somebody that crossed over the line, this, 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 this killer cop, which is what he is. Yeah. Nobody denies that. Yeah. And the weak guys around them, God bless them. But maybe you guys, you should have done something, but you know what? Yeah. I'll even take it a step further being a leader and knowing how that works the leadership has to go. Now, when they say dismantle the police department, that's a whole other story. But the leadership has to go. The mayor has to go. And the, and the chief of police. They, you know, they, the, that's yeah. a whole different set of worms, that's a can of worms. But you know yeah. what? You're right. Because leadership at every level is challenged right now. Thanks to so the let, COVID lockdown, we were challenged locally, right? now. We're, but we were also challenged at the federal level. And now we're seeing the leadership in the mid-range that's having difficulty responding to uh, the challenge of rioting. And blaming right. on somebody else. But, you and know, look, blame, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> this is Poetry Corner. And, you know, I don't want this to get into a crazy. Oh, I know. So tell us about your hero. I mean, this. Well, po people, this is an amazing poem. Um, first of all, yeah. Tell me what it's called. So I don't forget. Well, this is about a guy that was not a summer soldier. Yeah. And was not a sunshine patriot. You know, he was out there doing his job and happened to be caught in the in the maelstrom of, of, a, of a riot situation. And he was he was shot in the neck. And, you know, his name was Captain David Dorn of the St. Louis, uh, formerly the St. Louis Police Department. The name of the poem is in memory of Captain David Dorn, another black life that didn't matter. Okay. Strange how silent the voices are tonight. Another black life that didn't matter. His final moments seen live on a Facebook feed. How sad, how callous, how evil of you. A 77 year old black man lay dying for the whole world to see another black life that didn't matter. I bet you made your mama proud filming that for our global society. Another black man killed in memory of George Floyd. Thank you for showing us his final moments. May your karma bless you. Pure evil does exist. He was a retired police captain. Captain David Dorn was shot by looters while he was guarding a St. Louis pawn shop on June 2nd, 2020. Somebody filmed, put out on Facebook Live while he lay dying on the sidewalk. He was killed on Martin Luther King Drive. Let that sink in. Another patriot, this black stars and bars behind me with the blue stripe Terrible. You know, my dad grew up in St. Louis, and uh, it's sort of a family home, ancestral home for a few generations for us. And um, so dad came of age in the 50s, just before the civil rights movement. And St. Louis, as you know, was a flashpoint for that still is Ferguson, Missouri, a uh, flashpoint for civil rights. And uh, it's hard to know. Uh, I went to college near St. Louis. It's like it's sort of like a hometown for me. 
it's hard to know that my dad and Captain Dorn were like, you know, peers growing up together. That's really cool. You know, you know, our hearts and our prayers go out to the family of David Dorn and his friends and all those who admired and respected him and his grandkids. And Absolutely. His you know, but our, but our, our prayers go out to uh, the killer of the killers, you know. Um, so, yeah, let's explore that, because one of the things that I that I hear in your poem is this frustration with not being able to, to take it to the next place. I don't understand how I can be compassionate for the guys that shot David Dorn. Uh, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, you know, it, it, you have to search your own soul. You well, have sure, to, of course. I'm just looking for help. Yeah, you, you you have to just look at that person in the mirror, and why would you want to kill another human being? You know, you just have to ask yourself the question, you know, point blank. Why did I have to kill another human being? Why do I have to kill? You know, killing another human being is probably got to be the most debase human activity you could engage in, you know, especially when it's as senseless as that, you know, we can debate what war is all about and what self-defense is all about, but, you know, to film a grandfather who was only doing his job in the last moment of his life. So callously on Facebook live, I don't know if you can reach a human being like that. I think that's for the next place in their life, you know, that next dimension that they enter into. But I do know this, what you did was wrong. It was cold hearted. It was callous. It has no place in our society. And I pray that if you get locked up, that some prosecutor doesn't let you out early. I pray that you uh, make your way to prison and you then you'll have several years to, uh, to think long and hard why you would do something like that. Um, but for those of us who survive and, and write poems and listen to music and try to come to grips with all this, you know, I can only say that, you know, and it sounds so cliche and many of us have heard this, that there's a reason for everything. And maybe Captain David Dorn is the other side of George Floyd. And if black lives truly matter, then I do believe that it's up to the leadership in all communities to come together and collaborate and find ways and methodologies so that the senseless violence doesn't continue. And if you're an anarchist and you're listening, <laughs> it's tough, but I pray for you because what you're doing is wrong. And if you can't make it in this life, take your own ball of pain and find another way to make it work. You know, Start writing poetry. Do some artwork, learn how to play a guitar, you know, go to an anger management class. Yeah, find a way to get into that emotion so that you can fully inhabit it without it taking over everything that you do. Call your dad, call your best friend, call your mother, call your cousin, call somebody and get some help because anarchy is not the way to be a human being. You Even want to read it, again? John? You want to read it again? Sure. I I, I kind of want to hear it now, more in context, uh, and and let it sink in to me more deeply. Okay. Here you go. In memory of Captain David Dorn, another black life that didn't matter. Strange how silent the voices are tonight. Another black life that didn't matter. His final final moments seen live on a Facebook feed. How sad, how callous, how evil of you. A 77-year-old black man lay dying for the whole world to see another black life that didn't matter. I bet you made your mama proud filming that for our global society. Another black man killed in memory of George Floyd. Thank you for showing us his final moments. May your karma bless you. Pure evil does exist. In lieu of our normal um, outro, uh, I'm going to play different music for uh, which is used to honor the fallen, especially when they've served. 
But uh, John, I want to thank you for your bravery and for for having the heart to put this out there and also to talk about it so honestly today. Um, it's a scary time for white guys to be showing their cards and stating their heart, but I think it's time for us to lead in that way. And uh, if, I don't care what, what the color of your skin is, if you're moved by what you hear here, let that be a part of what moves you to also carry the message forward, because we can do this together, people. We really can. Uh, John, uh, thank, thank you, brother. And oh, you know, I'm in the fight. Oh, so. yeah, me too, man. So thanks for uh, having me here. And thanks. Thank you to the listeners. And, you know, if you like AHO radio, please subscribe to us on YouTube. And, you know, this is not a business. This is a global conversation that we're starting. And uh, we're all about authentic human outliers and, you know, join the conversation. And if, uh, if you have um, something that you'd like to tell the world, contact Bill or me and, you know, we can get you on our show. This is authentic um, conversation, no hype, no sensationalism. And, you know, it's a place to be safe and to, to share our ideas about about the things that affect all of us in society. So thanks, Bill. I'm honored and humbled to be here as well. Here's a salute to Captain David Dorn. I'm sure it won't be the last.